What is the primary purpose of a bootloader in an operating system? Is it A, to manage user accounts and permissions? Is it B, to provide a graphical user interface or GUI, GUI for the OS or operating system? Is it C, to load the operating system into memory during startup? Or is it D, to optimize system performance? You now have five seconds. And the quick answer is C, to load the operating system into memory during startup. The bootloader is responsible for initializing the operating system and loading it into memory when the computer starts up. When you turn on your computer, the bootloader is the first piece of software that runs, uh, initiating the process of starting the operating system. And for the correct answers, to manage users' accounts and permissions, user accounts management is typically handled by the OS after it's loaded. To provide the graphical user interface, or GUI, for the operating system, the GUI is part of the operating system and not specifically uh, managed by the bootloader and to optimize system performance. System performance optimization is not the primary function of the bootloader. And for the next question for exam, question number two. And the question states, what does the term file extension refer in the context of operating systems? Is it A, the part of a file name that indicates the file's location? Is it B, the number of files contained in a folder? Is it C, the characters used in a password protected file? Or is it D, the characters following the last dot in a file name indicate the file indicating the file type? You now have five seconds. And the quick answer is D, the characters following the last dot in a file name indicating the file type. A file extension is a set of characters following the last dot in a file name indicating the format or type of the file. In the file name documents.docx, the docx extension indicates that the file is a Microsoft Word document. And for the incorrect answers, the part of a file name that indicates the file's location, uh, this describes the file path, not the file extension. The number of files contained in a folder, the term for um, the number of files in a folder is file count, and the characters used in a password protective file. Uh, passwords are used for security, not file extensions. And for the next question for exam, question number three. And the question states, what is the purpose of a system restore point in Windows operating systems? Is it A, to create a backup of all user files? Is it B, to restore the system to factory settings? Is it C, to revert the system to a previous state in case of issues? Or is it D, to scan for viruses and malware? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, to revert the system to a previous state in case of issues. A system restore point allows you to roll back the system to a previous state before problems occurred, helping to resolve issues without affecting personal files. Uh, after software installation causes system instability, you can use a system restore point to return your computer to a state when it was working correctly. And for the incorrect answers, to create a backup of all user files, system restore points focus on system settings, not personal files. To restore the system to factory settings, this is more comprehensive action and not the primary purpose of restore points. And to scan for viruses and malware. Scanning for viruses is a task for antivirus software, not system restore points. And for the next question for exam, question number four. And the question states, what is the primary purpose of multi-factor authentication or MFA? Is it A, to encrypt data during transmission? Is it B, to prevent unauthorized access to a network? Is it C, to provide multiple users' names for a single account? Or is it D, to enhance security by requiring multiple forms of verification? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is D, to enhance security by requiring multiple forms of verification. MFA, or multi-factor authentication, requires users to provide two or more forms of verification. An example would be password and fingerprint to access a system uh, enhancing security. When logging into an online banking account, MFA might require you to enter a password and then verify your identity using a fingerprint or a text message code. And for the incorrect answers to encrypt data during transmission, data encryption is a separate security measure uh, to prevent unauthorized access to a network. Network access control is different from MFA and to provide multiple usernames for a single account. MFA is about multiple verification methods, not usernames. And for the next question for exam, question number five. And the question states, what is the purpose of a VPN or virtual private network? Is it A, to manage network switches and routers? Is it B, to create virtual hard drives for remote access? Is it C, to encrypt data during transmission? Or is it D, to control physical access to a facility? And now five seconds.
and a quick answer is C, to encrypt data during transmission. A VPN or a virtual private network creates a secure, encrypted connection over a less secure network, uh, like the internet, protecting data during transmission. When you connect to your company's network from a coffee shop using a VPN, your data is encrypted, preventing potential eavesdropping. And for the incorrect answers to manage network switches and routers, network management is not the primary purpose of a VPN. To create virtual hard drives for remote access, this doesn't accurately describe the role of a VPN. And to control physical access to facility, physical access control is different from the function of a VPN. And for the next question for exam, question number six. And the question states, which of the following is an example of social engineering attack? Is it A, installing a firewall to protect a network? Is it B, encrypting sensitive data on a storage device? Is it C, sending a fraudulent email to trick users into revealing their passwords? Or is it D, scam? And the correct answer is C, sending a fraudulent email to trick users into revealing their passwords. Social engineering attacks manipulate individuals into divulging sensitive information through deception and psychological manipulation. An attacker sends an email posing as a bank representative, asking the recipient to click on a link and then enter their login credentials. And for the incorrect answers, installing a firewall to protect a network, this is a security measure, not a social engineering attack. Encrypting sensitive data on a storage device, encryption protects data but is not a social engineering attack and scanning a network for vulnerable vulnerabilities this is a network security assessment not a social engineering attack and for the next question for exam question number seven and the question states a user reports that their computer is displaying a blue screen of death or bsod error what should be the initial step in troubleshooting this issue is it a reinstall the operating system is it b to check for software updates in the application causing the error is it C, perform to perform a system restore, or is it D, to note the error code and search for its meaning online? In our five seconds. And the correct answer is D, to note the error code and search for its meaning online. BSOD errors are often accompanied by error codes that can help identify the underlying issue. Searching for the error code online provides insight into possible solutions. When encountering a BSOD or blue screen of death, with error code memory management, searching for this error code can lead to recommendations for addressing memory related issues. And for the incorrect answer, reinstalling the operating system. Reinstalling the OS is a drastic step and should not be the first troubleshooting action. To check for software updates for the application causing the error, BSOD errors are more related to system level issues than specific application errors. And to perform a system restore, this might be considered after identifying the root cause of the BSOD error. And for the next question for exam, question number eight. And the question states, a user reports that their computer becomes slow after running a specific application for a while. What might be the cause of this issue? Is it A, viruses in the system? Is it B, overheating the CPU? Is it C, excessive background processes? Or is it D, inadequate internet speed? In our five seconds. And the correct answer is B, overheating the CPU. Overheating can lead to thermal throttling, where the CPU's performance decreases to prevent damage. When playing graphics-intensive games, the CPU temperature rises, potentially causing performance throttling and slower operation. And for the incorrect answers, viruses in the system. Viruses can affect performance, but they are not the only cause of performance issues. Excessive background processes. Background processes can slow down a system, but overheating can have a more immediate impact and inadequate internet speed. Internet speed is unrelated to a computer's local performance. And for the next question for exam, question number nine. And the question states, what is the purpose of change management process in IT operations? Is it A, to document the procedures for troubleshooting hardware issues? Is it B, to implement security patches on the network? Is it C, to ensure that changes to IT systems are planned, tested and approved? Or is it D, to perform regular data backups? You know, five seconds. And the correct answer is C, to ensure that changes to IT systems are planned, tested, and approved. Change management ensures that changes are carefully planned, tested, and approved to minimize risks to the IT system. Before implementing a software update on product production services, the IT team follows a change management process to assess potential risks. And for the incorrect answers to document the procedure for troubleshooting hardware issues, this is more related to standard operating procedures that change management. To implement security patches on the network, patch management focuses on applying security updates while change management 
covers a broader range of changes and to perform regular data backups. Data backups are important, but they're not the primary focus of change management processes. And for the last question of our exam, question number 10. And the question states, what is the purpose of a disaster recovery plan? Is it A, to prevent hardware failures? Is it B, to optimize software performance? Is it C, to ensure regular data backups? Or is it D, to ensure business continuity after disruptive events? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is D, to ensure business continuity after disruptive events. A disaster recovery plan outlines procedures to follow in the event of a major disruption to ensure the organization can recover and continue operations. In the case of a server failure, for example, a well-defined disaster recovery plan can guide IT personnel in restoring services swiftly. And for the incorrect answers to prevent hardware, hardware failure, failures, preventing hardware failures is a proactive measure, but disaster recovery focuses on response after such events. To optimize software performance, software optimization is separate from disaster recovery planning and to ensure regular data backups. Data backups are part of disaster recovery, but uh, do not encompass the full plan. Ladies and gents, if you'd like to further support this channel, make sure to check my Udemy Instructor channel where I've posted a number of CompTI exams. The exams consist of 270 questions each and they are presented in greater detail. The link for my Udemy Instructor channel is presented in the description of this video. If and only if you found this video informative, make sure to drop a sub and share it with your friends. I hope you found this video informative and I will see you guys next time. Peace!